The Dr. Berg Show. Live from the nation's capital, it's time to get healthy, lose weight, and feel great. Call now to speak with Dr. Berg at 866-561-4292. And now, Dr. Eric Berg. Hey guys, we're back. It's another Friday at 11 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. We're gonna welcome your questions. Uh, we have a live show here, and um, we have Karen that's gonna help out with all the, the million questions on social media. Yep. Uh, if you wanna call in, the number is 866-561-4292. We have a ton of callers from all around the world waiting right now, so we're gonna go right to uh, Megan from Georgia. Go ahead, you're on the line. Hi, um, uh, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, I was calling to ask about um, my fasting blood sugar. I started um, keto in the first week of January, so it's been about five weeks. And um, my, I've been diabetic in the past. I've had gestational diabetes, and um, so going into it, my fasting blood sugar was around 120. Um, and I'm a 37-year-old, and I'm, I'm nursing my daughter, too, so I haven't been able to do intermittent fasting for extended periods. Um, but... My fasting's gone down. The lowest it's, I've seen is 96, mm -hmm. um, and it's ranging around, you know, a little above 100. So I'm just wondering, um, I had read somewhere that if you're above 100, then you're not really in ketosis, and I don't know if that is true. Um, I'm showing keto, I'm showing um, ketones on the strips, the urine strips. So just wondering if I am in ketosis and if I'm just not keto adapted or if it's just going to take a long time to see those numbers come down. It's a great question. Good, so let's just answer that. Um, <clears throat> first of all, um, probably 25 years ago, um, might have been a little longer, maybe it was in the 70s, uh, normal blood sugars were, ra fasting normal blood sugars were actually a little higher. So there was a group a committee who changed it and made it lower and pretty much made everyone diabetic. So if your blood sugars are a little bit higher, um, not to worry about that because um, I think you, you're in ketosis. If you're, if you're showing ketones in your urine, you're in ketosis and it's working. Of course, when you're, um, you're nursing, you don't want to go crazy with intermittent fasting. I would just stick with three meals and then no snacks in between. That would be important. That would be like a nice version. But let's just pretend now um, you're doing everything right. You're not fasting and your blood sugars are not coming down and they're just too high and you want to bring them down. There's a couple things that I look at and this also goes for if you're actually not losing weight and or you're not losing inches and you're plateaued. This is kind of like a little, my little uh, troubleshooter. Number one, reevaluate your carbs. Make sure that you know that where they are at because a lot of times people are, oh yeah, my carbs are fine, but in reality they're a lot higher than they should be. Um, if you have a slow metabolism, you want your carbs below 20 grams. And in some cases, if you have a thyroid issue, you need to bring them down even lower. If, you, if your metabolism is com completely shot down to maybe 10 grams or less. Um, so that's one thing, okay? Just make sure your carbs are in check. Just basically want to make sure you're doing everything correct. Make sure you're not doing excessive amounts of protein. Make sure you're not doing no protein. You know, have some, it's like a moderate amount of protein. Make sure your greens are high. Uh, I also look to make sure that you're sleeping. How is your stress level? Those two things could keep you out of uh, ketosis for sure. Uh, then... There's other things you can do uh, because let's say you have a history of diabetes and it's chronically a problem and you have insulin resistance and you're trying to bust through this thing. Well, you might need nutrition, uh, nutrients, uh, electrolyte, B vitamins, uh, chromium, zinc, potassium, all really, really important. Vitamin D, very important to uh, improve the insulin resistance, which will bring down the insulin and help normalize your blood sugar. Um, the other thing is that you could add an exercise to that, okay? Add more sleep to that. And then let's say you've done all these things and still there's nothing else changing, then I would look to other body issues. Like there must be a weak link here. Do you have an underlying digestive issue? Are you constipated? Do you have an underlying inflammatory condition? Do you have some type of part of your body that is just like a weak link that you need to strengthen? Then, once you fix that, I would then start going more extreme with intermittent fasting. <laughs> so you want to go, maybe you're going two meals, go to one meal. Going one meal, make sure that, you know, maybe you do, you know, you adjust your fats, you know. So there's always things that you can do. All right, Megan? Thanks for your call. 
Hey, we're going to go to Chris from Florida. You had a question about intermittent fasting and gastric bypass. Go ahead. Yes, good morning, Dr. Berg. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. Hi, Karen. I, Hi. I love you guys. I, I listen every week. Oh, we love you, too. And I've been watching your videos. Thanks. I've been awesome. watching your videos, and um, I haven't started keto yet, um, but I am about to. I've been planning. I'm a planner, so I like to plan ahead. Um, I'm 58 years old. Um, I had a gastric bypass about 20 years ago, and I've gained some weight back. And so um, during gastric bypass also, they did take out my gallbladder. So I'm about to start keto, and um, like I said, I've been planning, watching your videos. So I've, I've gotten, I purchased a lot of your supplements, so I have them on hand, so I'm ready to get started. So my question to you is basically, I'll start with three meals. Can I use the kale shake that I have as a to supplement as a meal replacement? Like, can I have it for breakfast instead of eating? Oh, you mean the the, the powder kale shake, instant kale shake, or just yes, an actual the- kale shake? No, the power, the, have okay. the powdered kale shake, the chocolate one. Good. So that, that was the main can, question, right? Um, yeah, I want to know if I can use that as a meal replacement. Yeah. And also um, about intermittent fasting, I have a question about since I have had a gastric bypass and I can't eat a lot at one meal, I'm wondering once I start intermittent fasting, can I eat in between? Like say if I eat at 12 and then I eat at 6, can I eat in between just to, so I'm getting in like vegetables and things that I can't eat during the meals? Got it. Okay, good. So let me address those questions, okay? Um, <clears throat> yeah, the instant kale shake, you could add, add that as a meal replacement for sure. The only thing that I would add is I would add a little bit of fat. That way it makes a, a you know, better, better uh, meal because anytime you have low-fat protein, you want to add the fat in there. I do have a chocolate meal a replacement with MCT oil, which would be fine, but when you do instant kale shake, it, it does need a little more fat, so you might want to add that, and then maybe your greens. You know, then you have then you have the protein, the fat, and the uh, the greens. Okay, so that would be totally fine. Now, as far as the other questions go, um, <clears throat> the cool thing about intermittent fasting and gastric bypass is that the need for the calories go down because your body is adapting to that. So you no longer the requirements. Uh, for even all nutrients, even protein, go down because your body is protecting and it's recycling a lot of other different things. So uh, you can get by with less calories and do comfortably. Just make sure that it's it's kind of a personal thing. You have to adjust to your body to see how you what you feel and see if it works for you. Everyone is kind of different, but there's some guidelines. Um, so now, if you're doing, let's say, two meals, okay, can you snack in between? Ideally, you don't want to do that. You would rather, it'd be better to add the fat but let's say you're eating at 12 and 5 um, and you're in the transition phase, you're phasing into it, you got an eating window that you can stick things in there because now you're going to fast for those 18 hours, whatever it is. So yeah, add a kale shake, add a salad in, in, in the middle there. I think that's a great transition to get your greens. So that way you're not eating all of it you know, at one meal, especially for you. Thanks, Thanks Chris, that's a good question. All right, Karen, we're, we're going to you. If you have a, you have a quick question over there. Could you, don't say that, because we got a lot of questions over here. It's never quick in social media. It just keeps coming, okay? It's the gift that keeps coming. It's the gift that keeps giving. Yeah. Okay, so we have, um, I'm, I'm at a toss-up because we have a lot of questions that we get every single week. And I think it's important to, you know, to repeat these things. But, well, first of all, I want to say, um, Hello to, to Oregon and Chicago and Alberta and Michigan and California. And a lot of you guys aren't saying where you're from this morning, but hello. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to start with Katie on Facebook who's asking, how do you know you're in ketosis? <laughs> Good question. Yeah. Um, the, the best way is to do uh, keto strips. Okay, You can check. There's these little strips you can get on Amazon and you can check your urine and it'll tell you how much ketosis that you're in. That's one way. Is it necessary? No, um, because the other way is just to, you know, look at look at your inches loss off your stomach. If you're losing inches off your stomach, you're going to be in ketosis. Um, that's one of the best indicators because as you adapt to ketosis, what happens? You start burning up more ketones. There'll be less in the urine, so it gives you false this all false idea that. Oh my gosh, I don't have ketones in my urine. Yes, I'm losing weight, but I'm not in ketosis. Yes, you are. You're just burning up the ketones. Uh, in the beginning, though, you'll see more ketones because you're just losing more. 
So, yeah. So, so basically you're saying that the keto strips aren't reliable throughout this. Well, they're not 100%. They're a good, in, they're one of the many indicators, but it doesn't give the whole picture. Right. So use judgment, look at the whole picture. If you're losing weight, your inches are coming off, you're feeling great, guess what, you're in ketosis. Yeah, and you know, we had, we had a talk about this earlier today, or was it last night, and I was saying, you know, people have to realize, I know people get frustrated a lot when they're not dropping pounds, or they think something's wrong, I'm not losing the weight, I've been doing ketosis, I'm not losing weight, what's the problem, I'm plateauing. But um, I can attest to this, that uh, the scale doesn't tell you if you're in ketosis or if you're in the process of this thing that Dr. Burke explains, autophagy, where your cells are rebuilding. Um, I am losing size and building muscle, and I'm not losing any weight. So we were talking about the analogy, like, yeah, okay, you can build a brand new body in nine months. You can build a house in a couple of months. But what if you have a house that's been there for 50 years and you decide you're not going to tear it down and rebuild it. You're actually going to one by one remove the walls, rebuild the internal frame, you know, and go at it that way. It might take a little bit longer. So you have to look at all these other indicators. How does my skin look? How am I sleeping? How is my shirt fitting? How are my pants fitting? And, and really lay off the, the scale idea or thinking that just because you're not losing a pound, you know, it's not working. That's, that's not, you know, the only thing that could maybe not be working is that you're not, you know, following, you know, truly to, to keto and intermittent fasting. That, that's a good point because you have how many cells of the body, uh, Karen? Oh, you, th 300 trillion? 100 Three trillion <laughs> oh, yeah, cells. I knew it was really big. 100 trillion. So, <laughs> so it's going to take more than a week to get to your ideal weight. You have 100 trillion right. cells love, that have to be you know, improved, rebuilt. Right. And, uh, you know, also this other thing of like, people say, oh, I'm healthy. I'm only 30 pounds overweight. I'm healthy. I'm not on medication. Really? You have atrophy of the body, loss of tone. Uh, you live on planet Earth. Um, A lot there's of some, There's some issues there that need to be, so my definition of health is completely different than the average person. But, but again, you know, so Thank you for that, Karen. We're going to go right to um, someone that's been holding for 41 minutes. Wow. Rue Pinder. Go ahead. You're from California. Hi, yes, Dr. Berg. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Uh, doctor, I have a, I have a lot of uh, issue with my digestion from last two years. And finally, you know, they found out I had a lot of a uh, gallbladder stone and uh, inflamed gallbladder. And I just had a surgery. But my symptoms, my problem is still there and have a lot of migraine, like mm. a lot of migraine every day. So, so yes. can I ask you a question? Sure, sure. Do you have a migraine right now? Do you have a headache right now? At this time, no, not right now. Darn no. it. I mean, I'm sorry to hear that. But um, <laughs> here's, here's, something, here's something you want to do. You want to get right. this um, torture, I mean, treatment device. It's a uh, massage tool. Okay, and you want to take this, I have a technique. Okay. You would press it underneath the right rib cage, about an inch down, an inch off the midline to the right. And you can watch my videos on headaches in the gallbladder. You press it into the lower abdomen, right. and then if your headaches alleviate, that means it's connected to the gallbladder. So many cases where you have migraines and headaches are triggered by, a, there's a nerve uh, that goes right underneath the right side. It goes all the way up to the neck, up to the head. Right. I, I I saw your video and that time I had a surgery, so I, I mean, I couldn't do that because I have incision there. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. So then the okay. gallbladder formula would help, but there's some other, other points as well. As you do intermittent fasting and ketosis, the gallbladder, actually you don't have one. I think you said you had it. Did you say you had it removed? I just had a surgery three weeks ago. Okay. So now what's going to happen is, um, you have a little tube from your um, duct from your liver that goes into the small intestine. There's no sac there. So I think what's going to help you is some bile support, some extra bile that you can take in addition to your food. Take one after a meal. That way you'll have more bile to get more of a complete digestion. But the fact that you had surgery there, um, you're not going to be pressing there anymore. I didn't know that. So you'd, if you've had surgery, don't press where the scar is. Don't press on the gallbladder. Press on the opposite side on the pancreas, okay? I have videos on that. Opposite side, the mirror image side, underneath the left rib cage. 
that will give you a lot of relief. But as you do intermittent fasting and kind of um, maybe go easy on the fats initially, uh, your headaches should improve. Now, the other main cause of these migraines and headaches is a low blood sugar situation, uh, hypoglycemia, which so many people have, um, but it's hard to detect it. So um, watch my videos on that and continue to do this because eventually that will actually help. All right, now we're going to go to Karen. Okay. Well, I just read something, and I want to I want to address this that someone is a little disappointed in you, Doctor Berg, because you rarely answer the posts in your videos. So I just want to put uh, a little three thousand. There's three thousand videos, and um, no posts a day. Oh, 3,000 posts a day on over 2,000 videos. It's hard to get to everyone. It, it is hard to get to everyone, and we definitely do the best we can. And that's actually the video posts are inspirations for the videos that Dr. Berg creates. So don't feel neglected. Don't feel like no one's listening because moderators are, are scanning those posts all the time, trying to give people some help, and Dr. Berg's making videos. So um, another point is definitely look in the Facebook page and... YouTube and type in Dr. Berg blank, whatever, Dr. Berg uh, joint pain, Dr. Berg migraine, whatever, and you will get a ton of videos that answer your question. I am guaranteeing that. The realization that a lot of people are having is like, wow, you have a video on everything. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do. Just find, you have to find it though, and I'm working on consolidating that so you can find it, but um, that's why um, when you keep asking, answering the same question over and over, it's like, oh, search here. Right. Okay. Right. right. But you know, it is important. A lot of people are learning and so I'm going to give you a couple of these questions. Okay? Right. Go ahead. So I, I see a good question here. Uh, what is the, this is from um, Noreen on Facebook and she asks, what's the difference between keto and paleo diet? Okay, good. Good yeah. question. All right, so keto, uh, paleo allows more carbs. They allow more carbs. Uh, they allow um, some fruit. They allow some dates. Agave nectar. Um, agave nectar. Chocolate. Yeah. So, so keto is a, uh, a lower carbohydrate because car the carbs determine whether you're burning fat or not. And a lot of times when you're in paleo, you never get fully into ketosis because of those little carbs sitting there. Now, that being said, um, I have a version of keto that is different than other versions. And I, I recommend a lot more vegetables. It's, a, it's kind of like um, a healthier version. Plus, we're adding another strategy in there, which is a different way of eating, which is intermittent fasting. So uh, what I've done is I've combined the best of both worlds and combined all these strategies together to have a powerful program that people get results. So that's why it might be confusing. Uh, you have Palo, you have Atkins, and this and that. So yeah, next question. Okay, good. So somebody on YouTube is really wanting to know your thoughts on distilled water. Yeah. Um, distilled water, I, I don't recommend it because it's water without any minerals at all. And it's kind of like a refined product. It's not nature, you never find distilled water. So it starts to pull stuff out. Now, a lot of people take that to detox, um, which is fine if you're doing it very temporarily, but um, the problem with distilled water, it leaches out not just the, the bad, uh, you know, metallic minerals and stuff, but the good minerals as well. So you end up with, oh my gosh, mineral deficiency. So maybe um, you take the distilled water and then you add electrolytes in after. That's a possibility, but I'm not crazy of anything other than a short-term um, type of program where you're doing distilled water. Okay? Okay, good. All right, so we're going to go to Boston. Uh, Jody's been waiting for 31 minutes and 27 seconds. Oh go my ahead, gosh. Jody. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Berg. Hi. Um, uh, first of all, thank you so much for all your videos, and um, your your YouTube account is a gold mine, really. <laughs> your your videos have helped me fine tune my fasting protocols so much. Awesome. Um, I have I have lost forty pounds and wow. normalized my blood sugar in the last six months. Or so. Yay! <laughs> yeah. I got a bell. Uh, well, I, I got a bell a just for you. Thank you so much, Karen. <laughs> and well, I still have another 50 pounds to go. So yeah, we still. Anyway, um, my question is about the pancreas as it relates to type 2 diabetes. And I'm sorry um, if you've already addressed this. But um, mm -hmm. I have come across two theories about a diabetic's 
pancreas. Mm -hmm. First one being that beta cells or beta cells, however yeah. you pronounce it, um, get killed with years of high blood sugar mm -hmm. and they cannot be revived, like mm -hmm. the damage is already done right. and so forth. Mm -hmm. And the second is that the pancreas is just clogged with fat. It's just about like fat less than one gram, which is in the pancreas, and if that goes away, the diabetes is gone. So I was like, which one is it, in your opinion? Okay, good. Okay, so the first question, <clears throat> um, yes, the beta cells um, are control, they have actually produced insulin. So they're the ones that are controlling all the sugars um, in the pancreas. So um, that's that. Now, yes, years of eating the wrong foods, years of high sugar, make those cells work like crazy. And then they eventually get tired and they burn out and then they die and that's it, right? You become a diabetic type one. And you could also get a type 1 from autoimmune issues, which is, we're not going to get into that subject right now. But, um, you know, even if they're burnt out and they're not fully dead, you, I, f I find that you can at least improve them greatly, if not completely restore them, in some cases, depending on how far it's gone. So that's kind of an open-ended question. I would always try to improve it and see how far you can go. Because the goal is, if you're a diabetic and you're taking insulin, the goal is to have you take the least amount possible. Because if you're a type 1 diabetic and you're on insulin and you're basically eating the wrong foods causing the need for more insulin, you're going to get a lot of problems with your eyes, your kidneys, your nerves, and your heart and the arteries. So that's the goal. So, um, so that's one. Okay, so yeah, you can actually probably restore a lot of the function of the beta cell. Second question, fat clogging up things um, in the pancreas and, and that. Well, here, here's some data about fat that I want to just mention, uh, saturated fats. Um, if, you, if you consume fats with carbohydrates, that's really bad. This whole viewpoint that people are saying, oh yeah, it's all about the saturated fats. That's what's causing the diabetes. That's what's causing the problem. I will guarantee, in fact, I will bet you anything that these people that are consuming all that fat are also at the same time consuming a ton of sugar and corn sugar and high fructose corn syrup. I will guarantee that. They're not just having fat because the truth is that when you consume these fats with a low carbohydrate diet, you don't create that same effect. You actually can improve things. You actually restore function. So the danger is adding in the sugar. It's the wild, it's the variable that messes everything up. Uh, a lot of the successes that you see on our site, amazing success on all different levels. These people are doing higher fats, but they're cutting their carbs down. That's the best program for a diabetic. Thanks, Jody. All right, Karen. Okay, good. Well, here's one from um, Julie. She wants to know how long, if you're doing the diet correctly, how long does it take to reverse or repair insulin resistance? Yeah, good question. <clears throat> um, it's, it depends how, long, how chronic it is. I've seen some people who have a mild version and they haven't abused their life like I have with a lot of sugar. <laughs> so it's pretty quick. I mean, they see changes immediately and everything is great. And they're the success stories that you see on social media. That, oh, I did your program. I lost 30 pounds and I'm back to normal and it took two days. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and then you have other people who are a little more upset because they're not getting the results, of course, because they had an underlying insulin resistant problems for years previously. So that's going to take longer. So um, it could range anywhere from a couple weeks to months to a couple years. But the best measurement for insulin resistance, I believe, is your waist. Okay, measuring your waist. If that waist is coming down, your insulin is healing. And you, if you go out in society and look at people, you can tell who has insulin resistant problems just by the shape of where their, uh, their body is and if they have a big gut. Okay, you might find some people with a big gut, especially at, uh, at the... Um, uh, 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 uh. What? Don't, don't, don't say it. it. Don't say it. Don't at the carnivals. At the carnivals. I won't say it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I had to withhold that answer. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can find various them. fairs. You can find them everywhere, actually. You can. The, pro the problem is that 
that the food that you can find in the center of the grocery store and just about every commercial. Do you ever notice that you don't see a commercial for kale? You don't I'm going to make one. You don't see a commercial for radishes and kale and green peppers. You just don't see it. You see all these commercials for prepared food in the center of the grocery store. And those are very effective ads. And even the, the weight loss plans that are out there and really televised on commercials all the time, these are packaged foods. These aren't living food items and this does even if it if it allows some weight loss initially it, it you know people gain the weight right back it creates a big belly you see it everywhere i'm sorry that's a rant i had All to right. get it so off my chest now that you brought that up karen i'm gonna have to give people <laughs> uh the first quiz of the day okay? uh -oh. so i'm gonna ask a question and then i'm gonna I, go I to wanna a ring my bell again okay ring it, ring it later but okay. i have to um i have to an ask the question okay, okay. so here's Here's okay. a question, guys. I want We're you ready. to respond on social media. Um, Let me get to the bottom here. What food wow. has the most nutrients of any other food on planet Earth? Okay, T type in what you think. All right, we'll come back to that answer. Most nutrients? Yeah. Okay. Nutri how about most nutrients, nutrient dense out of all the foods on the planet. What is the number one food? It's is, very specific. Is this a repeater? Like people who've seen you before do this and I don't know, Karen. You're going to have to find out. You're going to find I, out. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to go to A. Rule from New Jersey. Go ahead. You're, you're on the air. Hi, Dr. Uh, uh, Berg. Thanks for Hi. taking my call. Sure. I'm, uh, I'll just give you my profile first. I'm a 51-year male working in IT, so I have a sedentary lifestyle with a very strong family history of a heart attack. Um, uh, I'm coming from um, India, so our normal diet consists of a lot of uh, carbohydrates, rice and wheat and with uh, vegetables and meat but the predominantly we take carbs as a, a main a main source mm -hmm. now um, recently i had an angioplasty with uh, three stents and i have high cholesterol i have blood uh, high blood sugar and blood pressure and i'm taking medications for all three uh, my total cholesterol is less than 200 but my ldlb is more higher than the a and then my uh, HDL is 25, and my triglyceride is 190. Got it. Uh, my A1C is at 6.1. Mm -hmm. uh, it has come down from 6.8. Uh, and uh, because of the medication and the diet that I am uh, last six months, I'm, I'm purely vegetarian diet. I quit uh, non-vegetarian uh, based on my doctor's uh, recommendation to go to a plant-based diet. Um, and then I have found my weight has come down by 15 pounds. Uh, my numbers are looking good. But uh, after seeing your videos, though it makes a lot of sense to me, but all these years I have been raised with a belief that eating meat and fat is harmful, right? No tea, right. no fat, right. no butter, no fat, uh, no, no red meat. Uh, now it is it is a kind of challenging to myself um, to, to adapt to this. But yeah. But more importantly, my question is, when you say high fat, do you mean saturated fat or unsaturated fat? Okay. That is one question. Good question. And then when you say low carb, are you talking about the simple carbohydrates or the carbo uh, complex carbohydrates, mm. right? Okay. And, and finally, okay. both I and my wife, we take the same food. Why I am getting all these problems when my wife is not getting? So uh, right. obviously something is different in the body style and uh, how it functions. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to understand the connection between these two doctors. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Great. Great question. Okay. So number one, um, you're coming from a history of a lot of carbs, right? So you know you have the whole thing: meat's bad, saturated fat is bad, and you need more plant-based. Okay. Yeah, you do need plant-based, but let's talk about plant-based. Uh, when you go into plant-based, a lot of people they don't really go into plant-based; they go on a grain-based diet. They because think about even vegetable oils. They're not vegetable oils, they're grain seed oils. Okay, grain seed oils. So the point is that, yes, you need the plants in large amounts. I'm talking like greens, absolutely. Um, but the, the problem you're running into is trying to get enough protein. You need enough protein on a vegetarian diet. You could do it, it's more difficult. Um, personally, I think if you added some high quality protein, whether it's fish or 
um, grass-fed you know, products or eggs, I, don't, I, I think that would help you personally. It's helped a lot of people. You don't have to do a lot. You can just do maybe three to six ounces per meal. Um, the other thing is when I talk about saturated fats, um, well, or just fats in general, you can do coconut oil. You can do um, ghee, okay, you can do that. In India, they, they use that a lot. Um, but just do a high quality of butter, do the grass-fed butter. Um, you know, you're not doing, you don't have to do bacon grease. You know, avocados are great. Olives are great, olive oil, you can do that. But um, one of the challenges that you, at the end of the day is you need to have all your nutrients. And I suggest probably you, if it's not working for you, your current program, get the book, see what you're missing and add that in there and test for yourself. This is a perfect example of instead of trying to believe a certain way of eating, you're already doing something that's not working exactly like you want it. Well, why don't you try this program, like I say, and compare the results. Then you will know based on your own experience if it's going to work for you or not. I, I, I'm confident it's going to work, but you'll never know by listening to people and listening, being confused by this or that. So um, that's pretty much my viewpoint and I'm sticking to it. But the boi- point, uh, the What's point, the point, would, Dr. Berg? The point is that you also need to include the intermittent <laughs> fasting big time because that's going to actually bring down your insulin and really help your heart. And on that note, Good. That's the end of the question. Go ahead, Karen. You have a <laughs> I do. Well, first of all, I'm just cracking up over here because <laughs> as soon as we men- I mentioned the commercial, somebody said, yeah, a Dr. Berg should make or have people make commercials about kale and then the best commercial wins a prize. So then as it's going ah. down and going down, going down, <laughs> and people are like, what's the prize? How do I win? No, no, no. <laughs> this is... This is somebody's idea. It's a fun idea. Okay. But it doesn't really exist. But okay. So here's a good question. Um, will keto help Hashimoto's and adrenal fatigue? Well, Hashimoto's is, a, is an autoimmune condition where you have low thyroid. And um, believe it or not, what's really bad for um, the thyroid is doing the high, high carbohydrate diets. It's not healthy. Your thyroid doesn't need more carbohydrates. Um, what it needs is a combination of keto and intermittent fasting, but also um, selenium and iodine. Mm. That would be very beneficial. Now you mentioned adrenals. Um, There's so many conditions that involve autoimmune with adrenal. In fact, if you take, and this is just based on observation, if you take any of these autoimmune diseases, they usually get triggered from a stress event. Hmm, interesting. That's an interesting clue. Mm -hmm. And then that means that adrenals are involved because adrenals uh, help you adapt to stress. So there's a huge connection between the adrenals and autoimmune. So the more you can improve the adrenal, the more you're going to help the thyroid. So uh, in the book, I talk about the, a basic keto and intermittent fasting plan, but then you would go not to the thyroid. You'd go to the adrenal chapter and start to add more of the adrenal type recommendations on top of this basic program. I think you're going to be successful with that. Okay. All right. Now we're going to Florida with uh, Stefan. Go ahead. You had a question. Yeah, hi, Dr. Burke. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> I have a two-sided question. Uh, okay. Number one, you know, uh, I'm doing two meals a day, and you said in your videos that protein, you know, six, seven ounces, could be six, could be eight, but seven was the number I watched the video. Uh, now, what about the fat grams when we do two meals? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the rule of thumb was 20 to 40 if you do three. That's question number one. And number two is, uh, you know, uh, you see in everything nowadays natural flavors, like uh, Perrier uh, with lemon flavor, it says natural flavors. Do natural flavors raise insulin Good or question. blood sugar? Good, Good question. question. Okay, so the first que- the, the fl- I'm going to answer the flavoring question. Uh, no, they're not going to, natural flavorings are not going to increase insulin. Okay, they're not going to. Uh, I know the ingredients of these and they're, very, very low carb, okay? Second question with the fat um, on two meals a day. I, I'm going to be sending a, I'm going to be, I'm, create, I'm creating a uh, calculator, a keto calculator to be able to help you with that. Uh, some people are like, okay, what are the calories? What are the grams? Okay, and other people are like, just give me a ballpark figure. I want to go on how my body responds to that. So they're not into the calories. So, but I want to answer both. Um, I mean, 
if you want to know the grams, it's going to be between 90 and 100 grams of fat per day. Okay. Now, the other thing about fat is it's one of those things in the beginning you need more and towards the middle of the program you need less. And then when you actually start losing too much weight, you might need to add more. So it really goes on your hunger. The hunger is the best indication between the meals of if you're doing it is enough fat. So that's what I'm going to recommend. Okay? Thank you so much, Stefan. Now, we're going to answer, uh, I want to know the responses on the question. What is the most nutrient-dense food? What are some of the answers? Okay, some of the answers were uh, kale, eggs, seaweed, we got raspberries a couple of times, we got avocado, someone said milk. Actually, they said milk, 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 milk. Really? Yes. Uh, but we did get a lot of liver, organ meats, and things like that. Okay. So, can I have a drum roll, please? Drum roll. Okay, so, this is the answer. <coughs> Actually, organ meats, specifically beef liver. Yeah, now, For some, of you, you going, organ meat people, some of you are going yay! like, what? what are you talking about? Listen, I'm just talking about what has the most nutrients. So no one could argue with that. Just look it up yourself. I mean, beef liver has uh, massive amounts of vitamin A, iron, bioavailable iron, uh, tons of um, like other minerals like zinc and selenium. It has vitamin C actually too, vitamin E, vitamin K2, coenzyme Q10. That's like for the heart. Like it has uh, amazing amounts of protein, uh, essential fatty acids, EPA, DHA, like it has everything in it. Um, now, personally, I can't eat liver. I, well, I will eat a small amount. I don't like it, but I'm just telling you that it has a lot of nutrition in a small amount in your diet, like once or twice a week, probably would be a good idea. There is, um, you can get a healthy, the key is you want to get grass fed, grass finished. Right. We found a liver great liver worst. worst. Yeah. Right. Now, there's going to be two questions that gonna, people are going to ask because of that, and I'm going to answer them before they show up on social media. Okay. Number one, well, I thought the liver was the place where you store all the toxins, toxins. right? So this is the next question. <gasps> Your mom is watching. Hi, Marge. Okay. Good. Hi. Sorry. I had... Hi, Marge. Okay. Say hello to your mother. Hello, Mom. How you doing? Um, <laughs> See that? Okay. So here's, here's brings, this brings up the next question, okay? And this, I, I kind of already screwed it up, so I'm just going to have to answer it because I was going to, this is the next true or false question. Okay. And that is, is the liver the organ that stores toxins? What do you think, Karen? Well, I live with you. So I know that's not true. Okay, good. So some of you are like, wait a second. I thought that liver was a, the place where you store toxins. No, no, no. Your fat is where the, st the toxins are stored. The liver is the organ that neutralizes toxins. Mm. It changes the poisons into harmless particles. Also, the liver um, is the organ that stores nutrients, Karen. Okay, so I kind of just screwed that up. <laughs> But anyway, uh, you can get a healthy... I think healthy... that would be a cool t-shirt. What did you say? You said... <clears throat> Save the liver? Save the liver? Yeah. No, that, that's a good line. No, there's something you said before that I'll have to watch the video again. You... Okay, go ahead. Okay. Move along. All right, so Jean is from Ohio. Go ahead. You had a question. Yes. Um, I was born with uh, no thyroid. I had all congenital hypothyroidism. And I don't like taking prescription drugs. I've been on levothyroxine for a while now. And I grew up with at least the first 20 years of my life with armor thyroid. Mm -hmm. um, I can't afford that because 140 months uh, uh, insurance companies don't cover it. Um, I have been doing intermittent fasting for several months now, which is helping. Mm -hmm. um, I do take a thyroid T3 um, with my uh, levothyroxin because I know that the <clears throat> sorry levothyroxin does not convert with the T3. Um, I did read that with the bipolar, which I don't really like saying I have, but the bipolar, you need T3 also. Okay. Um, what can I use to help with my thyroid? Okay, good. So the, other, the two minerals <clears throat> that are really important in the thyroid are iodine and selenium. Okay, those are the two that are really important. There's other ones as well. So if you were to get a plant-based trace mineral product, that would be really, 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 really good. Um, and, or, like, or sea kelp. 
high quality sea kelp, I think that will give you all the trace minerals that you need. Uh, that being said, uh, you're on intermittent fasting, which is very, very smart and really good to do, especially for people with bipolar and any type of mental illness because it improves your mood. Okay, it's natural. And uh, because when you take um, psychiatric medication for uh, mental disorders and bipolar, what happens is the side effect, it creates insulin resistance. So you gain weight. So uh, the other thing, not, uh, not to mention other things, but the other thing you want to do is look at the quality of food that you're eating in the intermittent fasting. Make sure it's really, really high quality. Don't neglect the cruciferous vegetables, despite what they say about the thyroid, because then you're taking iodine, you're going to be totally fine. And one last thing, if you're doing intermittent fasting, guess what? You're going to save a lot of money. You could save up to, I don't know, five, $600 a month if you're doing one meal a day. So that way you can take that extra money and buy your armor, which is a, a better uh, medication, or actually hormones for the thyroid. Thanks, Jean. All right, Karen. Okay, good. So I'm going to combine a bunch of questions together. Again, I'm going to remind everybody who's listening that and watching that um, probably 96% of the questions that come up during this live show already have videos on them. If you go to YouTube, um, type in Dr. Berg, and then your subject, you're going to see answers to it right there. So don't feel neglected if we can't get to you. But well, here's... does my mom have any questions? Marge. Marge. We'll find, we'll find out. Do you have a question? You have to type me. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Okay, good. So a couple of uh, combined questions here. Who is the keto diet not for? Like if you consider pregnant women, nursing women, children, uh, seniors, people with sicknesses, people with missing organs, people with diseases, who shouldn't do the keto diet? Okay. So if we're just talking about keto, and I'm not talking about other keto, other keto programs where they're doing maybe lower quality fats or oils, you know, that, I'm not talking about that. You're not talking about But that. the version of keto, it's called healthy keto that I'm going to rec recommend, has no contraindications as far as people doing it. It's good for every single person. Why? It's because it's a healthy, it's kind of what our bodies uh, need nutrient wise. It's actually, it's low carb, moderate protein, lots of vegetables, healthy fats. I mean, that's the perfect eating plan. Now, the next thing that people are going to want to know is how what about intermittent fasting? It? Oh, okay. And then how long do you, you do it? You do it for the rest of your life. I mean, why would you want to go back <laughs> to the normal diet, which is high carb? Right. That's, there's no purpose. Right. So uh, intermittent fasting, okay, is there any, uh, anyone that's it's not good for? Well, okay, so, you know, it's actually good for everyone. There's some, there's some um, adjustments you're going to have to make. Like, let's say you're a nursing mother. Uh, so you're not going to do one meal a day. Maybe you do three meals a day, no snacking. So you do a mild version of it. Now, the other point that comes up is people who have history of um, uh, eating disorders, okay, anorexic, bulimic, uh, they shouldn't do it. But here's the interesting thing. Shouldn't do what? Intermittent fasting. Okay. Now, I, I disagree because I think if you do um, intermittent fasting and you're doing it healthy with all, enough calories, What's going to happen is your overall mood is going to straight up and vertical. Right. Because what happens is it helps your mental state because you're running on a different fuel. When your mood is higher, you're much more aware of things. You're much more in the present. Mm -hmm. You can make better decisions. You're feeling better. Mm -hmm. that's, why our, fat. that's so, why our followers are so cool. Yeah, they're so nice. And um, funny. When you have a blood sugar problem, you become irritable. You do things that you you know, are, you regret, you say things, you, you know, so I think really the enhancing your mood, it brings your state of beingness, it's going to be really good. And that's just my viewpoint. Okay, um, good. So I have another question. Okay, go ahead. Here's one that I don't think we've ever had before. Um, can keto help or what would help with night terrors or sleepwalking? Okay, so if you're having night terror, what that is, it's a very severe B1 deficiency. You need a lot of nutritional yeast, uh, especially mm -hmm. if you're, let's say you go on keto and you're adapting into fat burning and you have like vivid dreams, nightmares, whatever, what, what's going to happen is you're like, that's, you need more Bs. So anytime you're converting to this new metabolism, which is ketosis, uh, the B vitamins are much more involved, so you need nutritional yeast for sure. Okay, good. Next question. 
<laughs> and this is my last taking question. Taking advantage of it. Okay. I am taking advantage. Okay. Can you use the kale shake powder instead of vegetables? No, you can't. Uh, <laughs> you can't. can't. Um, because it's, it's an enhancement. It has some kale in there, but it's not going to give you enough. Um, but that being said, the wheatgrass juice powder does give a lot of concentrated nutrition. So I would, I would say maybe if you're going to do that, maybe you need a little less, but you're still mm -hmm. going to need vegetables. And um, the powder you can put in your kale shake to make your kale shake more palatable if you really don't like it or you haven't oh, gotten used to it or whatever. You it'll put the totally chocolate. Taste good. It'll taste great. Yeah. I mean, I'll have people like, they don't like vegetables. Okay. Why? Well, because it's a lot of chewing. Okay, well, just get it pre-digested. You know, I mean, I'm sure you could buy it somewhere pre-digested. He's often, you know, he's a good guy. He's offered to chew my kale. Yeah, I'll chew and it for you. Like, and, you know, like, I'm like just a bird. being a good husband. Okay. okay, next I think this is where we go to the phones. Yes. Okay, okay so, uh, Mitchell, you're from Indiana. Go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Berg. Long-time yeah. video watcher, first-time caller. Oh, great. Um, I've been doing uh, car uh, keto for about five weeks now. I do intermittent fasting, a ratio of 18 to 6. Take my ACV, I drink my lemon juice, and I do cardio about three to five times a week. Uh, and like I said, I've, I've been in the diet for about five weeks now. And just this week, I've been starting to get, not debilitating, but persistent uh, lower back pain, sometimes on my right side. Today, it's on my left side. Uh, you know, I'm just wondering if that's a kidney issue or if there's anything else I can do to sort okay. help eliminate that. Good question. Um, do you get any uh, pain in your big toe? No, not at all. Okay. Have you ever had a kidney stone? Never. Okay. So here's the thing that I would, I would, I would do first because I have videos on low back. Uh, you could go to my um, YouTube and then start applying the techniques. I show you can use this press on the inside to take care of it. But um, there is one little factor. Certain people that are prone to kidney stones uh, could start uh, having a problem with that. So um, here's the thing that you would want to do to make sure it's not that. It's not actually, believe it or not, it's not like an, a kidney, uh, calcium oxalate stone. It's more of a uric acid stone. So it could mean that your urine is a little bit too acid because you're in some hardcore ketosis. So um, what you want to do as an experiment is alkalize the body a little bit and see if that problem pain goes away. There's a couple ways to do it. Uh, of course, the first way is make sure you're doing massive count, uh, amounts of vegetables, okay? The other is um, taking uh, the electrolyte powder that I have because it has a lot of potassium citrate, a thousand, and do like three of those in a day. And your pain should go down because it's very alkalizing. You're taking all the alkalizing minerals. Um, if you don't have it right away, you can just go to the store and get a calcium magnesium and take, um, take that on an empty stomach through the day and see if the pain goes away. Then we know it's more of an acidifying effect. And, and this happens in the transition, but not when you're fully adapted, but in the transition of getting into keto. So, um, but you're, all, you're already doing the correct thing, but you're taking lemon juice, maybe take a little bit more uh, apple cider vinegar, which is acidic, so you want to actually add more lemon to that. Uh, maybe like even two ounces a day, and drink a little bit more water, okay? And just to kind of make sure, and if that pain goes away, then we know it's kidney, because you want to isolate it. All right, <laughs> thanks, Mitchell. People are saying hi to your mom. I love that. Hey, could everybody just type in hi, Marge, and give Marge some love? She's an awesome mom and mother She is a great mom. Mm -hmm. She is a great mom. Uh, oh, hey. Yeah, do you have a question? <laughs> Because I, I the have attention a whole is bunch. now on me, I do, and it's one that's near and dear to me. Question came in: Does food have anything to do with hyperactive kids? And so my first two cents on that is, is um, really considering what's hyper, what's unusually active versus what's just a normal active kid. But past that, uh, what's your what's your feedback to that question? Does food have anything to do with a kid who may be overly well, it, it's good to have these quiet kids in the corner that yeah. just sit there. Speak and when you're spoken move. to. Yeah. Right. So, um, we were oh my both, gosh. We were both those kids, right? Oh, yeah, I was. <laughs> Marge, um, no, Marge was like, no. He, here's the thing about that. I mean, you, you would be literally shocked if you started these kids on a low-carb, healthy-type program. I mean, their mood, their irritability. I mean, how many kids, I mean, these kids are hyperactive because they 
are low in B vitamins, low blood sugar, they have no potassium, they don't eat vegetables. It's going to turn them into a, uh, a wind-up, you know, hyperactive uh, attention deficit kid. So, oh my gosh, it's, I'm going to write a book uh, for, these, for, the, for mood issues and yeah. irritable kids because there's, it's so easy to fix. Mm -hmm. And what you need to do is um, go to the YouTube channel that I have and type in these recipes. Because if you have these great keto bomb cookies around for the kids, they won't know the difference if it's sugar or not sugar. And you start having that, oh my gosh, these kids would be so healthy. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we're going to go to Kara from Pennsylvania. You had a question. Pennsylvania, yay! Hi, Karen. Hi, Dr. Roy. Hi. Um, I have a question. Um, I was taking, or over the summer actually, I had a partial hysterectomy, gallbladder, chronic pancreatitis, and H. pylori. So I had a rough summer. I started taking your gallbladder formula and changing my um, my diet, obviously, to the keto and fixing my low stomach acid. I've been feeling way better. Um, the last four days, I was getting like hot chills, cold chills for like four days. I didn't think anything of it. And then I go to bed a couple nights ago and I like had like flu-like symptoms. So I was wondering if you think this could be, um, you know, the keto flu yeah. or it, it could be something else because I was thrown up, you know, um, just felt like I had the flu really bad. Yeah, and you, how long have you been doing this for? I've been on the keto diet for almost four months with one meal for the last two months. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> I think there's something going on with that. The, the fact that you don't have a gallbladder kind of adds a little complexity thing. So uh, I would add in um, acupressure to left and right side underneath your rib cage for sure. Uh, I would do the... Um, the electrolytes, and then the B vitamins. So that, that way we can actually make this transition better. Um, but I think it could be a combination of something not draining properly through the, the liver and gallbladder, uh, or it could be just a missing element as you're transitioning to this. So uh, I would go back to the basics and, and make, maybe make some adjustments to the amount of fat that you're consuming since you don't have a gallbladder. We'll maybe ease off, uh, like it'll, it'll bring the stress down from the liver because now you don't have the gallbladder, so you're, if you add a lot of fat, it'll, stimu it'll try to stimulate it and it could create a little bit of a backup. So that's what I would do. All right, thanks, Kara. All right, Karen. Okay, good. So um, that you guys are awesome. There's like 1,000 hellos to your mom. Oh, that's great. I know, it's really great. Now let me give you her, uh, her cell phone. You can call <laughs> it now, personal cell phone. That would be great. She's got time on her hands, Yeah, right? no, I'm not going to give that out. No. Um, but she's an awesome lady. Okay, great. So also I wanted to give a shout out. Sometimes the notes are flying so high here on social media. I, I haven't been uh, on top of this, but hello to Canada, Chile, Indonesia. We have Cambodia watching today. Uh, Sweden, India, I I India? Italy, India, India, okay. Italy. That's the combo of, that's the new country. Just combine it. That's it a new better. country, India and Italy. Um, and, and there's more, uh, Australia, uh, all over the United States, ever. It's, it's amazing. But I did have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, good. Oh, and also, I wanted to mention that I'm sure you have another <coughs> uh, interesting tidbit to reveal only at the end, but also we are gonna do a little something different about 15 minutes after this show. We've had some questions. We had some yeah. questions uh, about how we met. I know. And I've been resisting this, but I've so if, caved finally. If you guys want to know the story, the um, true story. Does, does anyone want to know? Does anybody care, really? Does anybody um, care how we met? Yeah, but if you want to know. Oh, wait. England, Wales, Germany, Ireland. Now you're on three different questions so far. I'm going to keep you on track here. Okay, focus on the bunny, right? Focus on the bunny. Does anybody really want to know how we met? He thinks people care. Well, people are asking, so I'm like, okay, we're going to, about 15 to 30 minutes after this show, we're going to close down at the end of the hour, and then we'll come back up 15 to uh, 30 minutes, probably more 15, and then we'll, we'll tell you. It's going to be a live little thing. We'll do, tell a little story. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so stay tuned question? for that. And then, oh, I'm just saying, Liverpool, they, the whole world is watching. So my question, 
I, I, I lost track okay, of that so because I'll, the I'll producer the came question. over and gave well, me we some to... other pieces of paper. And, and... We, we are releasing a little uh, thing you can click down below. We have a pleasure food uh, document. So if you want um, some help with different ideas with pleasure foods to make this go right, click down below and you can get more information as a download. Uh, and uh, that'll be really cool. So that's kind of our giveaway for this time. And also, anything that I say on this show um, is not meant to diagnose you Disclaimer. or give you all, like any type of medical advice. It's just for your entertainment, okay? It's for your, something to research. I'm, yep. not, I'm not trying to diagnose you over the phone, check with your doctor before taking any of my recommendations. All right? Thank you. So now we're gonna go to Deborah from Jacksonville, Florida. You're on the line. Thank you, Dr. Berg and Karen. It was nice to watch all your videos and learn a lot. Um, I started intermittent fasting the first of the year uh, because I started researching. My mother has Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and it runs in our family and I have uh, severe IBS. And once I started keto and got about two weeks into it, my IBS is totally gone. Wow. I am so thrilled. Um, my question is, my fasting window has gotten down to six hours. Um, I mean, six hours of eating. Mm -hmm. um, and as it gets shorter, if I go to one meal a day, how do I calculate my calories? Because you lose your appetite, and to be able to eat that much at one sitting, is that wise to go to one meal a day? And if I do, how do I adjust yeah. my calories? I knew you were going to ask that, Deborah. So, um I just released a video on the calorie confusion people have when doing keto and fasting because here you have this uh, pie chart, right? You have this pie chart with 5% carb, 20% protein, and 75% fat, right? Now what happens when you go to intermittent fasting when you go to two meals and one meal? Do we still do the same 1,800 calories or 1,500 calories or 2,000 calories? Well, that's going to be a big meal, especially if you're not hungry. Um, for example, um, yesterday I did one meal a day and uh, I'm like, I can keep going. I'm not even hungry. It's almost like I had to force myself to eat. So it's difficult to eat that much because the meal that I'm, my body's eating is my own fat. So um, I'm going to create a calendar to help you figure this out because it's, it's a long answer. It's a little confusing and that's why a lot of people haven't really talked about it yet. And I. If you watch this video, I just want to apologize in advance for confusing you because it is a confusing subject, but just realize there's two things. I'm creating a calculator to make it really easy so you punch in your food and it'll kind of tell you where you're at and give you guidelines. And if you go to my site under the recipes, you will see a lot of those recipes, especially the meals, are all based on the percentages of what you need. So you don't have to actually even worry about it. Just look at the meals and like, oh, I can do that. Um, but uh, as you eat um, less frequent, the need for nutrients goes down. So you want to keep, if you're doing one meal a day, so let's say you do seven cups of vegetables, okay, and, or salad, and you do maybe, I don't know, eight, eight, maybe nine ounces of protein, and then the rest fat. And realize you may, maybe you don't need as much fat because your body is burning your own fat. So that's kind of something you just have to play around with until you feel comfortable with uh, eating. Because if you stuff in there, 75% of those calories with fat, and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm bloated for the next two days, that's not going to be good. All right? Thank you, uh, Deborah, for that question. All right, so now um, I have another uh, question that I want to ask Karen. It's a lot it, of questions. I know, today. I know. So um, this is the true or false question, okay? Okay. True or false, guys? Isn't it? A Can you let me ask the question? A statement would be true or false, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. Go. Okay. Greek yogurt has more protein than plain low-fat yogurt. Well, that's not fair because they all have Google. Oh yeah, you're not supposed to look it up. They <laughs> have Google right there. Okay. So um, no googling. If you answer it, just like okay. what you think. So go ahead and answer it. Okay. And then I'm gonna answer. Oh, I need to. Uh, I have someone on hold for 27 minutes. So Cynthia is from Los Angeles. So. Go ahead, Cynthia. Hi, guys. It's me. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Hi me. Uh, Hi, honey. So, quick question. Um, so, ever since I, well, I shouldn't say ever since, but after doing keto and intermittent fasting for about 
four months, I started turning on allergies like crazy. So I've never been allergic to anything in my life, and now I'm allergic to, like, egg whites and olive oil, and, and I'm having reactions, bad reactions. Okay. So I was just wondering, can, can keto or intermittent fasting kind of trigger allergies? Okay, so the question I have, what is the, when you say allergy, what is the reaction that's happening on your body? Is it bloating? Is it a skin sensitivity? Is it a rash, like a keto rash? It, it's uh, skin mainly on my face, and I, I, it just gets puffy and red and itchy, okay. like okay. crazy. It's so, Cynthia, that, that's not an allergy. That's called keto flu. I mean, uh, keto rash. And what that is is that... It is? Yeah, so as you're burning fat, guess where all the toxins are stored? They're coming out through the fat, and they're going to come out sometimes through the skin. So there's a couple ways you can minimize that. Number one, make sure you're doing apple cider vinegar with the meal, okay? Number two, you want to make sure that you're doing a large quantities of vegetable. Okay, I'm talking like seven to ten per day. That's going to actually keep the, the liver cleaned out. And then the last thing is the B vitamins. You need good amounts of nutritional yeast. That should make that go away. This rashing is a temporary thing. It's, it's not an allergy. Okay? Thank you, Cynthia. And so, guys, we're going to um, end off. And also, if you wanted to um, hear the story, because people have been asking how did we met. It's kind of a funny little story. We're going to come back in about 15 or 20 minutes and share that with you. Uh, thank you so much for your attention and your questions. And they were great. And thanks, Karen. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you guys next week or what, in 15 what? minutes. Greek yogurt. Oh, Greek oh, yogurt. Greek yogurt answer. Yeah, I almost forgot. Okay, so yeah, that, uh, the answer to that one is basically <laughs> gotten, like, a Greek billion. yogurt does have more protein than Yay. plain, low-fat yogurt. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Okay. See you guys. <laughs> Let me do that. Okay, thanks. Oh, boy.